This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Don't let your kids watch it! Hey there, Artie! Yes, yeah, so we're at the end of Chapter 6 of Chapter 3. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> that makes perfect sense. So, uh, Satoko's in a rough sp uh, situation. She now has to live with her terrible uncle again. Which is not ideal. And, like, Coach and Keiichi are kind of like, eh... We want to do something, but Coach is kind of of the opinion, like, well, there's not much we can do, and Keiichi's like, no, nah, there's got to be something, so. I have a feeling, one way or another, the uncle is going to end up dead. I don't know if, like, Keiichi's going to kill him, or if he's going to be, like, the victim, or one of the victims of this year's Watanagashi. But we might be encountering the festival this time around, because we haven't had it yet, and it's usually a pretty integral part of these chapters, so. Let's go. All right, yep, so this is the aftermath of going home after leaving Satoko at her house. So, Keiichi's not going to be in a very good mood. I went home and washed the day's sweat off in the shower. Normally, I would reset everything by taking a shower and forgetting all the bad things. But that didn't happen today. I got out of the shower to find fresh underwear placed neatly in the laundry basket. Normally, I didn't stop to think about it, but today I felt happy at my mother's consideration. At the same time, however, it made me realize how much Satoko must be suffering. At the very moment I was appreciating this gentle kindness, Satoko might be being bruised by her uncle's cruel words. Or fists. I went up to the second floor and shut myself in my bedroom. Then, facing my desk, I folded my arms. My topic of thought, of course, was Satoko. We'd thought that if we could just get a public agency to intervene in the right way, the problem would be solved. But with what Coach said... I didn't think it would be so easy. Satoko was obstinate, and she would stubbornly deny the abuse and try to endure it. And that was an act of atonement towards Satoshi, who had protected her before and then run away. As long as she thought that way, the situation wouldn't be so simple. But earlier, before Coach, I made a clear declaration. If I thought Satoko was in danger, then I would do what I had to. In the end, that meant I was just going to wait and see, too. Nevertheless, I thought I'd drawn a clearer line than Coach or my friends had. If the time came, I would report it. Over the phone. Given Satoko's personality, she might criticize me if she found out. But I believed it was ultimately the best decision. Hey, Sam Purser, welcome. Oh, so we've got two different Nates here in chat. Interesting. Well, welcome. Glad you joined in. Wait, Keiichi Maibara. Would that really be all it took for the problem to end? Say that I reported it to a public agency like the Child Consultation Center. What if they stuck to their wait-and-see attitude like last year again? Last year, they decided to do just that, and the situation improved temporarily, but then the aunt, thinking herself a laughingstock, increased her tormenting in secret. In the end, things became more underhanded than ever before. This year, it was her uncle. I had just seen him for the first time today, but the man seemed much more direct, much more violent than the word underhanded could imply. He wasn't like their aunt. No, not that subtle. He was more direct. He might also assault her with punches and kicks. That could easily be discerned from the bruises and such I saw on Satoko's body. Shit. You're too naive, K.G. Maribara. However heroic it may seem to report what was happening, if it doesn't save her, then it doesn't mean anything. Reporting things to a public agency was only one option, and leaving everything to them would be dangerous. We would need something more to guarantee Satoko's safety. I scratched madly at my head, thinking, then tilted it back, wanting at least a little bit of calm. I'm telling you, we just have to make a fake Tinder profile for him, get a match, send him away on a booty call for a year, and boom, we're problem solved. It'll be easy, right? <laughs> hey, Liz, welcome. <laughs> First one here. <laughs> well, actually, you're the third person in chat, but there you go. The memories of angry arguing with my friends today came to mind. I was embarrassed that I hadn't realized it until Rena said something. She was right. My house is big. Compared to all the houses with the straw-thatched roofs in Hinamizawa, it was really big. We did actually have empty rooms. I have never thought that we were affluent, but also never that we were poor. I just didn't admit it because people would think I was arrogant. But maybe my family really is wealthy. We had a few rooms we could lend to Satoko. The guest rooms are only in use when people related to my dad's job came and stay every once in a while. <laughs> no, no worries. 
no worries. Plus, if we cleaned up a few of the rooms my dad uses for storage, they could work for her as well. Is he, is he actually going to broach the topic? It's going to be hard to explain this to Mr. and Mrs. Maibara, but, you know, well, I was about to be like, it's Keiichi, he can convince them, but also he has a tendency to be like, ah, freak out, and people don't understand. As for food expenses, that might have been a more serious problem than a kid like me could imagine. Lunch every day would be manageable. All of our friends would just have to bring a little bit more for lunch than they usually did. With everyone pecking at everyone else's food anyway, it would be manageable. For breakfast and dinner, though, that would be, have to be up to Mom. I would need to convince her to lend Satoko more than just a room. Of course, I don't think even convincing her of that would be easy. About how much did it cost for one person to eat? How many tens of thousands of yen per month? They couldn't complain about about it if I shouldered that, could they? I only had 10 to 20,000 yen in savings, but it was something. I actually had even more, thanks to New Year's gifts and such, but my parents had taken all of that and put it into a fixed time deposit. If I could get access to that, it should add up to a lot of money. And if I got that far, I could ask Mion and Rena to share some of the burden. Of course, I wouldn't depend on that. Rena got mad at me, didn't she? About how I shouldn't just shove responsibility onto others. I'd have to ask for help. Even so, I'd basically be saving her myself. I would follow through on it. Oh, but it wouldn't only be food expenses. There were a lot of other things that you couldn't do without, like baths and laundry. My mother was awfully methodical and strict about cutting out inefficiencies, and for once, that was troublesome. She might even make reference to the money it would cost for the detergent Satoko would use for her own clothes. I couldn't think about only food expenses. That's true. That's true. There's a lot more to living than just that. I... I needed more money. <laughs> I need money. <laughs> hey, wait, Keiji Maibara. Since when was this all about money? Even if you could afford it, you would also need your parents' permission first. Yeah, you can't just hide her in one of the rooms. That'd be weird. They'd be looking after a young girl for a really long time. What would I say to persuade them? Just calm down a little bit, Keiji Maibara, and you'll realize right away that you can't. Even if you ask them seriously, they would tell you to call the police. Even if you manage to gain their empathy, why should the Maibara family have to shoulder all the burden by itself? That's what would happen. That was it. It was a very sad and frustrating, but no matter how much I wanted to help, my resolution alone couldn't save anything. If it makes you feel better, Keiichi, a lot of times adults are powerless too. Actually, that probably would make him feel worse. I felt frustrated. I believed my feelings were stronger than anyone else's. I even thought they were stronger than coaches. And yet... At that point, there were two knocks at my door, and Mom poked her head inside. As someone financially dependent on his parents, I shouldn't say this, but... I just sat around doing nothing, and food suddenly appeared. It felt so natural to me that I'd shamelessly thought of it as the responsibility of the parents who gave birth to me. But when I realized that natural thing was actually a right, I came to realize just how hard it was to grant that privilege to others. Even that boring meal in front of me, no better than it ever was, had more meaning than that tonight. There was food for three on the table right now, for Dad, for Mom, and for me. I couldn't imagine how hard it would be to add another place at that table. Think, Keiichi Maibara. If it was hard to make food for four, then just think about how four people could eat food made for three. Oh. I changed around the way I thought, and with that I began to consider an unthinkably bold plan. That's right. I didn't need to get my parents' permission. Oh no, I don't, I don't like where this is going. She should just live here in secret. No, don't do that! How is that gonna work? How is that even gonna work? There's no way you're gonna keep that a secret. There's no way Satoko's gonna go along with this. Oh, this guy's just an idiot. I got upset when I found out a while ago, but if I remembered right, if you climbed out the window, window and then shimmied down the first floor roof or the gutter, you could get in and out of the house directly from my room. Satoko's physical ability far surpassed my own, so it would be even easier for her. I hadn't even thought about it, but her living here secretly was actually a necessity. Bruh, nah uh Nah uh I'd only have to bring Satoko to my house, and when the public agency said that they would wait and see. In other words, if Satoko's uncle continued to be her guardian. 
If, in such a situation, word got out that she was here, her uncle would barge in and drag Satoko back with him. Her uncle was her rightful guardian, so my parents would hand her over without an argument, no doubt. So, I needed to keep it a secret that she was living here. This is such a bad idea. Oh my gosh. If it needs to be a secret, then having my parents help would mean a lot, but gotta deceive your allies first, like they always say. This is so terrible, bro. Okay. Persuading my parents was an unrealistic proposition, so I'll search for a way to have her live here in secret. Yeah, because that's a realistic proposition. When I was around, she would just have to be really quiet in my room on the second floor. The issue was the daytime. If she was hiding from her uncle, she shouldn't go to school. It might be lonely, but not going would be the better option. And how long do you plan on keeping this going here? Like, <laughs> until Social Security is like, yo, uh, she ran away. Like, how... Eventually, they're going to be like, oh, wait, no, here she is. Like, this is not a tenable solution by any stretch of the imagination. And yet, he's portrayed it as like, no, 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 this is a realistic and only solution that would work. <laughs> I could easily teach Satoko the stuff she learns in her grade. Actually, during school, I mostly help all the younger kids out rather than study my own stuff. During the day, I would need to go to school, and so I wouldn't be at home. My parents respected my privacy now that I was this age, so they wouldn't go snooping around in my room while I was gone. So you think. I think. <laughs> if she hold herself up in my room, it would be okay, right? If my parents did come, thanks to where the second floor was, she could hear their approach from the sound of them coming up the stairs. And there would be a little bit of time before they got all the way up, I estimated a few seconds, that she should be able to hide herself in the closet. Wait, wait, KG. Something doesn't make sense. More than one thing! If she can't go to school, then what'll she do for lunch? Calm down already. I should just leave her my own lunch, couldn't I? I should just go to school without lunch and get everyone else to split theirs with me. Okay, that's good. No more contradictions or oversights, right? N nope, da no, there definitely still is. <sighs> oh, breakfast and dinner. I could somehow get her to go without breakfast. I can go two meals a day when I sleep in on Sundays, after all. Every night, I'd pretend as though I had a bigger appetite and then ask for a bigger helping. And then I could just somehow give part of that to Satoko. As a test. I stood up from my seat with my plate of fish in my hands. どうしたの、ケイチ。ご飯は座って食べなさい。うん、うん。ちょっと気分が変えたくなってさ。Oh boy. Is this is just going to be a regular thing every night? 自分の部屋で食べてもいいかな。ボロボロ落として汚すぞ。食事は食卓で食べなさい。Yep, yeah, it's important to eat as a family. うん。ごめん。Hey, wait. I only tried to take away one plate of fish, and they ganged up on me? In reality, it was impossible for me to smuggle food away without my parents knowing about it. But it, it must have been worth taking the time to think about. There must be some trick, some method to avoid them, me, them realizing. Even if I can't think of one today, I might think of one tomorrow. My appetite was rapidly fading, so I finished early and went back to my room. I went back there and tried to think about it from Satoko's point of view. For example, let's say my parents were coming up the stairs right now. I've got to hide. I opened the closet. Clatter, clatter. It didn't open quietly. Hey, wait. Didn't it always open real smooth and quiet? Why was it suddenly doing this now? Was this house even structurally safe? Was it already showing signs of dilapidation? Or were the hinges just not greased well enough? Could I just apply some lubricating wax? The sound itself might have been soft, but it left me uneasy as to whether my parents would detect it happening when they climbed the stairs. But this was an easy problem. I could do something about it. I just had to fix it up a little bit so it didn't make noise anymore. For now, I'll close myself in the closet as though I'd successfully hid. I basically always left my futon, a futon out on the floor. I couldn't think of any real reason my parents would want to go into my closet. Even so, there might still be some reason they would. I might need to construct some sort of camouflage so that she wouldn't be noticed even if they did open it. But the more she worried about that, the less time she'd have to actually hide, meaning it would be more likely they'd hear a noise. And then, I suddenly had to go to the bathroom. The bathroom? The need to use the toilet. So obvious, and yet such a fatal flaw. The only bathroom was on the first floor. It would be absolutely impossible for her to use it without my family realizing. I might need to set up a portable toilet, like a chamber pot, I guess. This I can't believe he's still going with this. He's not like, never mind, this is stupid. He's like, no, 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 I guess we could do this stupid thing. So Toko would hate it, so she could go in my room. But the stench, that would be pretty terrible. Anyone sensitive would probably notice the smell without even coming into the room. The bath was okay, though. 
She could just take a bath when my parents were out. But I couldn't do anything about a toilet. When her stomach started to hurt, if my parents were lazing around downstairs, she'd be in trouble. It was then that I'd noticed that I'd been clawing at my head with both hands. I sat down in the dark closet with my knees against my chest. I buried my face in them and tore at my hair. The more I thought, the more contradictions popped up. The more I thought, the more things failed. And the more I worried, the more I was reminded of how little power I actually had. My back started to hurt from staying in a cramped place for so long. But if I was to shelter Satoko, I would need to force her to feel this pain. To live in such a dark, narrow, suffocating place. Forever. But it would still be better than being abused by her uncle. Or so I wanted to think. It got hard to breathe, so I gave in and crawled out of the closet. I looked at the clock, and to my surprise, it was 3.30 in the morning. It had felt like so little time, but it was so unbelievably long. When I realized that, I was slammed with the terrible urge to sleep as if the time had only just caught up with me. I didn't have enough strength to fight it, and I fall flat onto my futon. Shit! I can't just go to sleep like this! If I waste any time, then I'll mean I'm taking the wait same wait-and-see attitude that Mion and Coach and everyone else did! I needed to stop worrying about how to rescue Satoko for a minute, or even a second longer than everyone else did. Isn't there a better way? Isn't there a better way? That one phrase I spoke to myself swirled around and around in a spiral, and steadily took over my entire mind. For my last moment of consciousness, I thought, there were a ton of blind spots in what I'd considered tonight, but I absolutely wasn't wrong for having those ideas. Tomorrow, I would suggest this bold plan to the others. Mion might be able to help somehow, and Rena was really sharp, so she might have a good suggestion. And above all, we needed to rescue Satoko once again, with everyone helping out. I felt pathetic for letting myself fall asleep. I'm sorry, Satoko. This guy has a lot of pride. <laughs> He's like, I have to be better than everyone else. I have to be the one to save her. It's like, it's, it's, I appreciate you care so much, but at the same time, I feel like this is not going to work out for you, buddy. The ceiling blurred into view. It was hot. There was a thin layer of moist sweat on me. The voices of the cicadas permeating my room were somehow grating to my head. I remembered today was a weekday and quickly brought myself to consciousness. And then, finally, I leaped out of bed. The clock read a little before ten. I was totally late. When I wandered downstairs, my mom would get mad at me. There was nothing I could do, though. After reviewing the schedule for the school day for a moment, I suitably rearranged the stuff in my bag. I hurried and got dressed, then went down the stairs. <sighs> there was no sign of my parents anywhere. Maybe they went out somewhere together. So that's how it was. My mother had probably woken me up once this morning, but then I fell back asleep without remembering it. And my parents, thinking I'd gone to school, left. Something like that probably happened. I went to the front door, and as I expected, it was locked. Looks like I was right. It was further evidence of my speculation being correct. When I realized my parents weren't here, I suddenly felt less like I had to rush to get to school. <laughs> I'll just play hooky! There was one portion of breakfast left in the dining room. Probably mine. The milk they'd poured in had gone warm since a while ago. When I realized how hard it would be for me to sneak food for Satoko, yesterday I had cried. Well, thinking back on it, food wasn't the only issue in that regard. I wasn't in a position where I could care for, for Satoko by myself anyway. <laughs> that was a hey, not, that was a double four, wasn't that? I wasn't in a position where I could care for for Satoko. <laughs> oh, wow! After how many re-releases, they actually still have that error. Interesting. Such a shame. <laughs> Such a heavy feint just to save a single person. I'd seen this on TV and in the comics all the time. Those feel-good words about how you'll save your friends for sure and such. And that's why I ran my mouth like that, swearing to save her. Because I wanted to feel good about it? No, that absolutely wasn't true. We can't all be Superman, alright? Because the fact was, I couldn't save her. Because I didn't want to think like an adult. Like I couldn't do anything but watch. Had Satoko gone to school today? I immediately realized that was a meaningless question. Whether or not she did, there wouldn't be a change in the environment she'd be placed in. If I couldn't save her, and no one else could either, then we could only pray for a miracle. 
俺たちは無力か mind, mind, hours, well, of course they did. Once ten o'clock came around, you could barely call it morning anymore. I didn't feel like walking the same old route to school. I needed to ultimately get up there, but it was like I didn't want to choose the shortest route, the most proactive one, to get to school. Put in a more positive light, maybe I wanted some time to walk by myself and think. I had to go to school. Partly to make sure Satoko was safe. Also, you know, you kind of have an education to think about. But I hadn't come up with any plans yet. Nothing since last night. So the path I took for my house was in the complete opposite direction. Oh boy, Stardew Valley. How about that? If I went this way, I'd pass Rena's house and the dam site. It would be quite a detour. I calculated how long of a detour it would end up being, and then, satisfied with the answer, I started to walk. Why are you going this way, dude? This guy does not care about his education. Rena had brought me to the dam site a few times. One section of it had turned into an unlawful, oversized garbage dump, and Rena really liked going fishing for junk in there. Without that, she'd come off as a completely normal girl, too. I could think of a few other qualities she could do without, but whatever. Yeah, mainly the, uh, the, cre the crazy eyes. The view quickly opened up wide, and I was hit by a strong wind. There was no shelter here at this big dam site. Maybe it was a good thing I came here, I thought. At the very least, it was more healthy to think about stuff in a place like this instead of my cramped bedroom. I took a deep breath and filled my lungs with the rich, cold air unique to Hinamizawa. Breen, breen! I turned around reflexively. It was a bicycle bell. Considering where I was standing, I don't think they were trying to get me out of the way. They'd rain the bell because they wanted something from me. <laughs> yeah, yo, yo, yo! It's our boy Tomatake! It's been so long. We haven't seen you since you died in Chapter 2. How you doing, man? <laughs> I love the French music. I've seen this person around a few times. Right, I remembered. His name, I think, was Tomatake, a freelance photographer who lived in Tokyo. He would, zeal he would zealously visit Hinamizawa every season to take pictures. Or so Mion and the others told me, I think. Why do you want to go to Rika's shrine? <laughs> I hope Keiichi's a little better at navigation than I am. I knew where everything was in my head, but explaining how to get there was difficult. I was a little irritated at having been bothered for this, but then I quickly realized it meant my doer detour actually meant something. That feeling faded quickly. Yeah, okay. Now we have a valid excuse. It's a Keiichi. Why are you uh, five hours late to school? Uh, well, I met this guy named Tomatake, and I, I wanted to show him around town because he was lost. Oh, what a good guy you are, Keiichi. Here, here's a gold star. <laughs> uh, Here, have some heart candy. Nope, no, I got nothing to do today. Tomatake-san finally appeared to have realized how strange it was for a student like me to be here at this time of day. I smoothly told him not to worry about it, and turned my back and started walking towards the Furude Shrine. Tomatake-san hurried to turn his bike around and came after me. <laughs> I don't think this is what it means. What a free-minded freelancer. It was easier for me, too, that he was under the impression. It seemed absurd for him to introduce himself when I was just showing him to the shrine, but he gave me his name, so I needed to give him mine back. He's just being friendly. <laughs> Aren't you supposed to be at school? Principal sent me. He seemed like a pretty silly man, but that felt kind of good considering I'd been suffocating with worry over Satoko all night. Look, Tomatake is the best adult character in this, so... Along the way, Tomatake-san spoke at length to me about how precious the nature in Hinamizawa was, and how it was a treasure trove of rare wild birds, despite me not having asked. <laughs> I wasn't interested in what he had to say, but he seemed to be enjoying himself, so I left him to it. 
この石段を上がれば神社の境内ですありがとう助かったよああちょっと遅刻しちゃったかな As Tomotaka-san mumbled to himself, he left his bicycle nearby and started to climb the stairs quickly. I didn't have a watch, but as far as my internal clock could guess, it was still a little late in the morning. School wasn't very far from here. Maybe I could kill a little more time until then. He does not care at all! He's like five hours late to school. He's like, well, you know, I could kill some time before going to school. <laughs> what, is you, what are you going to say to teacher when you're late, buddy? With that in mind, I went up the stairs in pursuit of Tomotaka-san. When I reached the top of the long staircase, I arrived at the wide open shrine grounds that were too grand looking for this tiny village. Rika's gonna be here just like, <laughs> You're playing hooky keichi, Nipa! <laughs> Tomotake san. Oh, there he is. It looked like he was supposed to be meeting someone here. Then he got lost and ended up being late. He was bowing to a lady who must have been the person he was meeting. Oh no, it's gonna be Creepy Nurse, isn't it? Sure is! It's Creepy Nurse! Wow! How do we know? Hey, they look so friendly and cute together. And she looks a lot more sinister in this one. <laughs> you barely open your mouth when you talk. <laughs>、uh, yeah! What?Kei-chi-kun,ついてきたのかい?別にそんなつもりはないですよ。ただ、ちょっと時間つぶしがしたかっただけです。<laughs> <laughs> <laughs> I really don't want to go to school today. That's one way to look at it. Takano. What was I, a celebrity? Well, she did say my name out of nowhere anyway. I was oddly concerned about what she meant by famous. I remember your last name, your Takano. <laughs> Takano Mio san da yo. Mio Takano, alright. Mura no Shinryo Jo ni tsome teru. That's right, she's the Kei-chi kun wa kenko sou da kara, amari byoin no o sewa ni wa nara nai kana. I generally avoid going to the hospital unless I have a reason to. Sekka ku o shiri ai ni nare tan da kara, kondo byoki ka nani ka dekki kara, choppiri da ke service shite ange yo ka shira ne. What does that mean? <laughs> This lady named Takano san, I kind of didn't remember her. Maybe we'd passed each other in the street a few times, but I was pretty sure this was the first time we'd talked. Well, this is Hinamizawa. Even if I don't know a person's name, it's not unusual for them to know mine. I glanced at Takano san and saw she had a bag and a camera. So, you two are both a photo of the camera? Ah, that's right. I'm going to meet you. I'm not a photo of the camera. ジローさんが優しくてほどきをしてくださるだけなのよ。ああ、ねえ。ああ、ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。あ Well, they were certainly one couple you couldn't get tired of watching. Oh boy, okay, festival is in two days. Oh boy. Oh, I just remembered. There was some village festival called Watanagashi or something the day after tomorrow, on Sunday. Hinamiza no Mamorigami, Oyashiro Sama ni Kansha Suru Tame. ふるい布団を積み重ねて供養するそんなお祭りでしたっけあらごめんとあらごめんとあらごめんとあらごめんとあらごめんとあらごめんとあらごめんとあらごめんとあらごめんとあらごめんとあらごめんとあらごめんと
Very ominous. そしてもう4度あったのよ。5度目がないと言える方が何の根拠もないと思うけれど。I knew what they meant by their whispered exchange. On the day of Watanagashi, a freak death always occurs, which people call Oyoshiro sama's curse, and a disappearance occurs that people call being demoned away. These strange events had happened four years running, and Watanagashi, rapidly approaching the day after tomorrow, marked the fifth. Udano Kyutekini Tatario Nasu Oyashiro Samaka. Kotoshimo Artoste, Hataste Sono Hoko Kernoa, Dareni Nardarone. Oh, Bokua Kokoni Kurtabini, Chanto Maidi Ste, Osai Sen Oi Deter. Well, you don't want to pray to a demon, that's a very bad idea. You also don't want to donate money to demons. That's also a very bad idea. What's with that look? Oh, is that so? Hmm. Oh, no, I don't know about that. 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 Mm. You're so creepy. <laughs> Even if she's saying, making this as a joke, she just joked that this guy was gonna get offed. Tomatake san was the only one with a pained grin, but we were all smiling. Me included. Really. Why, then why is the ominous music playing? Oyashira sama, the one who used a curse to kill people involving all with the damn pro construction project. One after the next. He killed the damn construction manager, killed Satoko's parents for supporting it, and the next year he even killed her aunt. If the demon in a way was part of that curse, you could add Satoshi to the list of victims. As I thought about it, I realized that in the serial freak death incidents, the overwhelming majority had the last name of Hojo. Half of the deaths and disappearances had come from the Hojo family. The Hojo family lived here in Hinamizawa. Yes, they did. <laughs> Let's get this other creepy music. Did that mean Oyashira sama punished and cursed them particularly harshly because despite that, they had been in favor of the dam? <laughs> we changed the music just in time for it to stop. Well, uh, don't that figure. Takano san, who had been enjoying a few words of Tomotake san, was caught unaware by my sudden inquiry. Oh, yeah. Satoko no Ryoshinga Tatari Gorosarete Obamo Tatari Gorosarete Datara Jumban Tekinua Tsugua Ojino Bankana Teo Motandes. Man, you're well informed. Chone no Tatari de Obaga Muzana Snikatoshi Sureni Osoreo Nashte Machini Nigate as this yo Oyashiro Sama Tashka Murao Sete Nigeta Soto Surnoa Yurusana Kata desu ne. It's weird how much of a believer he is in the curse now. I hadn't intended to be quite this persistent. But those words, they just flowed out of my mouth without me thinking about it. Right. Oyashiro sama's curse. I didn't believe in something so unrealistic, of course. But the fact was that every year unfortunate accidents and incidents happened to the enemies of the village. Like Takano san said just now, it happened four times. No one could say there wouldn't be a fifth. Hmm. <laughs> Look at that! Look at that smile! She knows something! She knows something! <laughs> She's a great idea! I'll kill him this year! Again with the creepy laughter. Come on. Okoruka Mushirenai Fuko Warauno a Yokunai yo. Gome na sai ne. Why do they do ufu fu fu fu? Nobody laughs like ufu fu 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 fu. Like that. Nobody, nobody does that. Demo, Oyashiro sama no tatari wa watashi no life work da shi. Takano-san gave off a mysterious, somehow intellectual impression, and her life's work was mysterious in its own right. She probably really liked an inexplicable supernatural phenomena or something. Or there's more to it than that. Are we getting the info dump again? <laughs> I 
I'd say it's 92% to RN. <laughs> Listen, Takano, I need him to die, all right? <laughs> like, like, like I said, like I said, guys, I don't, I do not in any way, shape, or form condone murder. Having said that, if the guy did get murdered, I wouldn't be upset. So, so long, I guess. I'd say there's a decent chance Keiichi ends up killing the uncle himself, and if so, or it might be like all of the friends together, like the entire gaming club together, like kills him, and then we have to enter like a blood pact of like nobody tells anybody about this, or we're all in trouble, and then like probably Satoko and Rena go crazy, and then end up blabbing to somebody, and then we all go crazy, and then everyone dies anyways. Oh, see, see, he knows. He knows what's up. Maibaraku, Santa Claus no shoutai wa shi. I don't know why, but that line killed me. <laughs> she says, she said so seriously. Like, Do you happen to know who the true identity of Santa Claus is? Yes, his name was. Uh, well, actually, Santa Claus is a conglomeration of multiple people, some real, some fake, but the main one was Saint Nicholas. And he was cool, you know? Saint, the, if you look at the actual legend of St. Nicholas, he was really cool. Where, like, he inherited a huge amount of money from his family, and he so strongly believed in, like, the biblical idea of, like, generosity and self-sacrifice that, like, he gave away all of his money, lived a modest life, and, like, any time he got money, he would, like, donate it to people who needed it. And the whole, like, oh, Santa goes down the chimneys was, like, a man had, like, I think three daughters... And he was poor and, like, he couldn't afford to marry off his daughters because he couldn't pay a dowry. So anytime his daughters were, like, old enough to be married, St. Nicholas anonymously dropped dowry money down the chimney for for them. And, like, after this happened two times, the, like, dad was like, well, it was going to happen again. And, like, he kind of caught St. Nicholas doing it the third time. And Nicholas was like, yo, like, man, like, don't tell anybody because I don't want people to know I'm giving away money. He's like, I, I just, that's between me and God. And, but then after St. Nicholas passed, like, the legend came out anyways. It was it's really cool. He also allegedly punched someone at the Council of Nicaea for blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Again, not not confirmed, but there there's there are whispers. Huh? <laughs> okay, she's like, why did this guy just talk about Saint Nicholas for this much? <laughs> I just got a strange question all of a sudden and I couldn't immediately answer. Oh. All right, Takano, I see you. With your creepy diag... What's with all these... Man, man, Higurashi really likes these, like, diagonally slanted CGs. Because they're like, ha, this means that the, the video number will go right over her face. <laughs> Darn it. And if I reverse it to the other side, the M logo will go over her face. I can't win. Papa, yo. Okay, I don't like using that word. Technically, okay, to be fair, my parents never pretended Santa was real. I, I always viewed Santa as like, oh, he's the mascot of Christmas, but he's not real. Okay, just what? Santa's not real? そりゃそうですよ。どんなものの正体だって最終的には人間です。だってここは人間しかいない世界なんですから。That's not true. I felt like I put that somewhat strangely, but Takano-san was not as dissatisfied with that reply as I might have guessed. あら。その年齢のうちからそれに気づけるなんてなかなかね。人間の世で起こる現象は全て人間の都合で人間が起こす。では、マイバラ君、もう一度尋ねるわよ。Wait, are you saying that Oyashiro-sama's curse is caused by Santa Claus? Honestly, I'm wondering that myself. Oyashiro-sama is either, like, this concept that has been made up by the village that, like, the head families are kind of keeping together, or at least one of them is keeping together. At, at the very least, the Sonozakis are part of this. I'm pretty sure Rika at least knows about it. And I don't know about the mayor, because we haven't really met him. Either that, or Oyashiro-sama is actually a real demon, who is, like, 
manipulating people. Which I think that would be really cool if they had a real demon in this. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, I don't know if it's like an artistic decision or whatever. But yeah, there's so many CGs in this game where it's just, oh yeah, everything's diagonal. Oh, hot set. Pre oh, the presets are just number two. Oh, okay. Takano-san took a step towards me and gazed into my eyes as, as she asked. Santa Claus was really the parents of every family's children. If lionizing that legend... Lionizing? Is that a word? Was a corporate tactic to try and profit during Christmas sales, then... What was Oyashira-sama, really? Also, what the heck is up with her? Her fingers are very unnatural looking. They're, like, way longer than they should be proportional to her hand. Like, her fingers are, like, so much longer than the actual, like, palm of her hand, if you look at that. It's not natural. She also doesn't have nails. Again, I shouldn't, I shouldn't make fun of this, because, again, this is way better art than I could ever make in my lifetime, but... Still, I uh, sometimes if I stare at a piece of art for a moment enough, I'll pick up on stuff. <laughs> hey, Chikun. Okay, creepy lady. <laughs> Keep this to yourself. But uh, where Oyashiro-sama? If you got someone you want us to kill, Takano-san,ね。Oyashiro-sama の祟りをめぐる一連の連続開始事件をね、ひなみざの村人が何かの儀式に基づいて行っている。人為的殺人事件でないかと見ているんだよ。誤解しないでね。うん、あ、あ。あ、あ。あ、she um, I could only I could tell only that she was saying some crazy stuff. To use a food analogy, like you'd force feed a duck to be fattened, she forced her words down my throat. That's what it felt like. Yeah, we're getting back into some of the info dump from chapter 2. Onigafuchi, the demon's abyss. Mm -hmm. yep. Takano-san, having entered her home field, leaned forward and began to speak of ridiculous matters. Tomotake-san realized she was overawing me and interrupted for me. How's it going, Mobius? Welcome. We're getting info dump on the creepy stuff that's happening. That dude is ripped. Yeah, this is Tomotake. He is, he's the best adult male character in the game by far. Handsome and nice and not perverted. Which is a lot harder to get than you might imagine. <laughs> yep. So? I don't want to ask you. You give me the willies. Well, I'm sure you do. You're a nurse. Thanks. Keiichi, you are so late for school right now. <laughs> First, he overslept by like four hours. Then he's like, uh, kind of lounged about before, like actually heading out. Then he took a long detour. Then he took another detour, making this guy go to the shrine. Then he's like, oh, hey, he's here with his partner, girlfriend, don't really know. Yeah, we'll talk to them. It's like, meanwhile, the police are being called and a missing person report is being filed. Takano san seemed a little unhappy that Tomatage san had rained on her parade, but she stopped talking about it then. Even so, it was still a very interesting story. That Oyashiro-sama's curse, which we thought of as strange freak deaths, were really homicides, perpetrated by the people of the village. Well, we already know that. We know the Sodazakis are behind that, because they have the whole torture bunker in their, like, uh, building. So, <laughs> She's like, I do? <laughs> Tomotake 
I could just kind of felt it vaguely. It didn't seem like her extreme passion for this research would calm down just because these things were taboo, or because it was safer and easier. This person loved walking through the profound, forbidden abyss of risks and taboos. Tomotage-san seemed a little disappointed not to be able to go on the date he'd planned since I had brought up a weird topic. Yeah, we, we, we kind of ruined his fun. But right now, there was something I wanted to ask just for a little bit. And that was about whether Satoko's uncle will be chosen for the curse this year. <laughs> it's like he knows! If he was, then another miracle would happen just like last year. A terrible incident would happen again, but it would release Satoko from an unfortunate circumstance once more. まあ、もちろん、おそらくあの辺りの人たちが関わってるんだろうなっていう鬼が淵村の歴史を研究していれば、自然と至る必然的結末。それは誰です？What would I do if I knew? I asked that question to the other me deep inside, but I got no reply. ねしね。それを知ってどうするつもりかしら？別に。Oh no, we, we already had that. Twice. <laughs> Takano-san, toying with Taboo, gave a devilish, satisfied smile, as though nothing in the world would be more amusing. That voice doesn't really fit her. I think it fits her just fine. She's kind of creepy, so... <laughs> she speaks in that, like, low, like, uh -huh, voice. She was probably trying to tease me, but I didn't feel like going along with her little game one bit. Kichi's <laughs> way more bold right now. <laughs> I had felt a tinge of irritation at Takano-san's roundabout way of speaking. But those emotions escaped my mouth, like water flowing through a strainer. <laughs> no, 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 she gives me the willies. She also ap apparently faked her own death in the last chapter. In, like, the last timeline, so I definitely don't trust her at all. Hmm, of course, I wasn't the only one taken aback by what I said. <laughs> Rugged Hank, that's me. Okay, this is getting weird. Takano-san's tongue poked out of her mouth. That's really weird. And I was convinced that it was long, thin, and split in the middle like a snake's. Oh my gosh, is this woman a demon? <laughs> oh, alright. <laughs> Why do I feel like we're about to make a deal with the devil? <laughs> I can't promise that. I definitely can't promise that. Nope, I'm not agreeing to, I'm not agreeing to any of those, Takano. If you know something, go to the police. I gulped firmly and nodded. You are an idiot. <laughs> she sounds like someone just using sarcasm 24-7. Maybe. To me, it sounds like she's like... Definitely sounds like she knows more than she's letting on. Tomotake-san made an exaggerated expression of distress and gave a dry... Excuse me. Gave a dry, vague smile and lit a cigarette. No, dude, you were doing so well. <laughs> and after I said that, I finally realized why I wanted to know. <laughs> you cannot give me it to be continued after that, <laughs> before they realize, before they tell me who's behind it, or their theory of who's behind it. Come on, man! You can't do that! 